Wow, look at that. I mean, what the show? Look at that. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I'm liking what I'm looking at. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name's Yuki Cookie, and welcome to Harry Potter and the Mysterious Thief. Now, this is a game made by River Studios, and it's about, I think, I think it's about Harry Potter and Draco Malfoy. Well, yeah, let's find out. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> yes, they're in potion class, apparently, with Snape. I fell on the floor. My body got got limp. I couldn't move at all. How reckless of you, Mr. Potter. How much courage did you have to muster to come here? Or should I say how stupid one must be, be to do so? Well, I was just thinking of paying you a visit. But you have made my job easier. I am grateful. The stranger grabbed me and turned me around so I could see his face. I tried moving. But my body just wouldn't would not listen. He forced my mouth open and pulled in some kind of nasty tasting liquid. It got difficult to breathe. My body started shivering as if I, I had a fever. I, a thin whiff of translucent smoke seeped out of my chest. The stranger began harvesting it into a small vial without wasting a second. At that moment, I, I felt that I regained enough strength to open my mouth. What? What are you doing? Do not worry. I am just taking something that is. This is of more use to me than to you, Mr. Potter. No! Stop this! I tried to move, but still couldn't. You will not even notice that I haven't have taken it. However, I just might be wrong, and you will turn into nothing. He sneered and pushed the cork into the top of the vial. Of course, that's providing they find you in time. I, I felt a knife being thrust into my chest after these words. Good day to you. Ooh, the stranger suddenly threw the vial on the floor, shattering it. The smoke that escaped filled the whole room. When it cleared, where was nobody else in the room but me? Hmm. Ooh, three months ago. After the Battle of Hogwarts, I decided to go to the Ministry and apply to the Order of School. I didn't have to wait long for the reply. I got accepted immediately. <laughs> no wonder, because I'm Harry Potter, the boy who defeated Voldemort, to quote the minister and the newspapers. The first year was especially crazy with the press following my every move. I was even forced to use the invisibility cloak once, just to get out of the house to go somewhere. Thank Merl Thank Merlin they realized I've after some time that there was no more no more story to be had. The newspaper headlines finally started to change some other issues. As to aura school, I managed to graduate sooner than others, and in two years I was already a full-fledged member of the aura department. Everything was going smoothly, to my surprise, and I also liked the job. It did have a huge amount of paperwork, of course, of course, but mostly I was working outside the walls of the ministry. Then not so long ago, on the second, 22nd of April, I was given my own office with the nameplate Harry Potter, Aura and all. Ah! It was a small office with some old furniture. Nothing special, nothing extra, just a table, a couple of chairs and a huge empty bookshelf. The previous owner of this office fell, fell fighting Voldemort, as did many other Aurors. Still, new Aurors were coming in too. In too. One of them being my best friend, Ron Weasley. However, unlike me, he had to study for three years. Since he graduated not so long ago, the missions they, they assigned him were rather simple, mostly talking to witnesses and working with the, with the archives. I got promoted, promoted a couple of times, and occasionally was sent on, a, on quite a dangerous missions, dealing with what was left of Voldemort's followers. You mean the Death Eaters? Usually. After missions like these, I had some time to rest, but by simply sort sorting papers. Some of the papers were den denunciations, le leading to warranted searches, so my colleagues and I had to visit the wizard, wizard in question and go through their potions, spellbooks, and other stuff. Just recently, <laughs> Harry tanned himself a little, it's from Avada Kedavra! <laughs> Just recently, I managed to successfully catch a catch Selvin, a Death Eater in, hold, in hiding who had been thought to be dead, meaning that I deserve some peace and quiet. I leaned back in the chair and let out a sigh of, of satisfaction. Suddenly, someone knocked at the door. Come in. It was Ron. Whoa! Ooh, Ron is hot! <laughs> hey, Harry. Hey, hey, Ron. What's up? Nothing much. 
Ye yesterday, though, there was another denunciation paper se sent to the department. It was anonymous. I sighed without satisfaction this time. That's weird. What was in it? Usually wizards sign such letters with their real names, thinking that by doing so they would elevate themselves in the eyes of the ministry. It says that there are still some forbidden potion left in the library of the Malfoy Manor. There's even a list attached. Really? Yep, and guess who's going to go and deal with it? Well, since you've come to see me... Yep, what about you? I've been sent to talk to some wizard who claims to be cursed and he's lost all his luck or some bloody nonsense. Lucky you. My thoughts exactly. At least it's gonna save me some nerve cells. Here's the list. Ron gave me a small piece of parchment that had all the book titles and author names. Happy searching, Harry. And don't let the Malfoys get under your skin or anything. Easy for you to say, Ron. Ron left, left my office. The Malfoys. I didn't even bother thinking about them since I last saw them in court. It seemed as if they managed to simply vanish right after being acquitted. Even the Daily Prophet had nothing on them. After a couple of hours, my, colle my colleagues and I took off to Malfoy Manor on brooms. The house itself looked way less darker and gloomy than it had some years back. Ron, Hermione and I had been brought there for an interrogation. It was surrounded by trees with a lush crown of leaves and well-groomed flower bushes. Contrary to my expectations, everything looked very friendly. We were just coming up to the door as it opened and, and a neat house elf in, in a clean pillowcase appeared in the doorway. Is it? I didn't expect that, given how Dobby looked, he looked when he came to me during my second year at Hogwarts. I thought the Malfoy elves were living in far worse conditions. He invited us into the, into the house, saying that the young master would soon calm down. The young master is probably Draco. It's strange that we won't be, be met by Lucius Malfoy himself. Oh, we're gonna see the little shit! <laughs> I look around. The interior was very exqui exquisite looking. I wasn't as impressed with it. It's the first time I had been here. And again, that hadn't been the time for exterior admir admiration. I always thought that the overall look for, of the rooms would be f very gloomy and in black or green colors. In reality, the rooms looked bright and, sus and spacious, and despite the fact that the green still dominated, it was complemented, but not by a black, but silver color. It would, I would assume that there's been some repairs and re redecorations done recently. I doubt that the Malfoys were one of those families who would cherish the memories of the torture and, more, and murder that once taken took place in their home. Absorbed by, the, by my thoughts, I didn't even notice that the elf with who met us returned and was waiting patiently near the door. Ah! I came up to him. Man, that's a scary looking Dobby. Could you please tell me, where are the young master's parents currently? Visiting relatives in France. Suddenly, there was a familiar voice behind my back. Ah! It's. Oh! Malfoy! Malfoy! Mal. Malf. Malfoy. Boy. Boy. Honey. Sweetie. Darling. H honey pie, sweetie. Marty, you you do not have to tell everything to strangers. But wait, it's it's Potter. <laughs> the elf winced and started babbling nervously. I apologize, Master. I wasn't thinking straight. He bowed several times. So I turned and there he Oh the way he smiled so cute! Ah! <laughs> So I turned, and there he was, with that smirk of his, Draco Malfoy in the flesh. For a couple of seconds, I got confused. I imagined that Malfoy might have changed during this time, but I didn't think that he would change so much. I remembered him as a student who always needed some backup from his loyal followers. Now there was a confident man standing in front of me. Oh, Potter. You did, you did not have to in invent such an elaborate scheme to visit me. You could have just sent an owl and I would have found time for you. Apparently, on the inside, Malfoy remained the same sarcastic schoolboy, trying to irk me at the first opportunity. So I grinned to myself. Hello to you too, Malfoy. We have received a letter claiming that there are some rather peculiar books hidden from the Ministry in your private collection. Uh, what's that gigantic, gigantic 
looks wet. Looks, books, books, Potter. You of all people should know how many times my house has been searched through, top to bottom, by your buddies there. We do not have anything left to share. So, you sent your colleagues here in vain. <laughs> Alas, because they have a more important job than flipping through books in my library. Maybe you could tell me what exactly are you looking for, and I could give them to you immediately so that both of us will not have to waste our time. As if I'm going to believe that you'll just hand them over like that. Right here! You can see the chin? Looks the f looks fat. Look the chin. I know I'm gorgeous, but the fat here. Imagine 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 if I don't have the fat here. But I guess that's just part of my genetics. Potter, our library is enormous. Are your friends ready to waste their whole day? Yes. Show me where it is. Draco sighed and ordered the elf to escort my colleagues to the library. I stayed in the hall with him, though. Silence was hanging in the air. It was getting more awkward by the, by the minute. Draco was the first to break the silence. Ugh. Where are my manners? Care for some tea? Care for some pot of tea? <laughs> we have some exotic leaves. No thanks. Suit yourself. Some other time, perhaps. Although it seems that we both hope there won't be any other time. So, Potter, is that your dream job, then? You could say that. And what are you up to? It doesn't look like you're working. I am not. I'm being, I'm being idle at my parents' house. We are rich, after all. I see no reason to work. Really? Of course not. Doing nothing is too boring. By the way, there's a big chance that your life might have been saved by my efforts once or twice. How's that? How's that exactly? I practice potions. A part of my antidotes are purchased by the Ministry of their employees' sake. As if I haven't heard your name brought up at our department. Of course. Why should they be telling about it? It really is a potion maker. Maybe the Malfoys have forbidden potion books. The coincidence is too good to ignore. However, I'm more than sure that there's nothing in the library that would, be, that would have been too obvious. We should look someplace else, most likely where the books are used. Still, it seems, it seems too fishy. If you're telling the truth, then show me your lab, or wherever you're making your concoctions. I could see that my doubts offended Malfoy. That was weird because it's not like I used to trust him before then, before either. Let's go. I followed him. It's funny. I I want to see I want to see Hermione. We got to a door at the end of the hallway on the first floor. Draco Draco unlocked it with a key and went in first. Come come in, Potter. Come in, Potter. But do not, but do note that should you break even one single bottle, I'll poison you. I gave him a single glance, a side glance, full of more doubts, but decided to be careful nonetheless. I followed Draco again. We passed a couple of tables with all kinds of ingredients, three different cauldrons, and stopped, apparently, by his work desk with a bookshelf nearby. Here, here it is, Potter. My work desk. L looks alright. Cool, cozy. I look around, paying attention to the books on the shelf. My eyes stopped on a book without an author or title. It had a strange symbol on the cover, though. I reached for it, but Draco stood in my way. Don't touch it! Don't touch it! Merlin forbids! You damaged it! Step aside, Malfoy! No! I have a search warrant for every room in the house, so I appreciate my mercy that I'm investigating only, only the library. Good, good bluff there. Confidence is key. Because I can't start... Because I can start going through other rooms too. And I'm more than sure that I will find something much more interesting than the books I'm after. Draco bit his lip. And didn't answer. He stepped aside, watching me with eyes that burned and cursed. Why do you have to be such a horrid troll? I'm just doing my job. It, I took the suspicious book. The cover was fake and it was indeed one of the books on my list. Would you look at that, Malfoy? 
a forbidden tome. This book has been in my family for generations, Potter. I know that should it fall into the wrong hands, suffering will follow, but it is in my hands but I, and I use it for good only. Why should I believe you? You think I want to pay a visit to my Azkaban friends? Let's, suppo let's suppose you are telling the truth. What do you expect me to do? Tell them you didn't find any anything. Just straight up lie. Yes. <laughs> Give the book back to Malfoy and tell nothing to, to the others. Fine. But you owe me, Malfoy. Fine. Unwillingly, I passed him the book. He was silent for a moment, and quietly, almost whispering, said, Thank you, Potter. And stop looking at- and stop looking at me, as if I'm gone mad. Uh, oh, he's blushing! Uh, uh, sorry. Our aura group returned to the ministry. They didn't find anything. I didn't say anything. I was still in two minds about not confiscating the book and covering for Malfoy. On the other hand, he was right, and it was indeed unlikely for him to be doing something illegal. Well, time will tell. Uh, month passed. One sunny morning, I was in my office, as usual, reading the Daily Prophet, and it had an article about that case which started as Ron's, Ron's and then, because of no progress, got me involved. The title read, People are losing themselves. How to save your... How to save your... Your you from being stolen. It was a hard few months for us all. As you all know, there's a known... is a new thief in London. His aim is not your money, jewelry, or, or your life. It takes away that makes you special. He's after your personality traits. Our readers might remember the first victim of the mysterious thief. Irvine Sands. A promising young wizard with exceptional skills. He had been... Ex mentioned once in the past in the article about a man winning 56 bets. Having been attacked by the thief and, de and deprived of his luck, Irvine lost all of his belongings, his house and his sanity, ending up in St. Mungo's clinic. A knock at the door interrupted my reading. Come in! It was Ron! Yeah, Ron. With yet another heap of papers. This is the fourth bloody assault, and don't and we don't have a single clue, and no idea as to the guy's motive. What can you do with someone's traits? I said in response, if only we knew that. Berlwin has finally confirmed that the, that the thief uses potions, so we'll most likely need help from someone potion for some potion maker too. I was just thinking about writing to Edison, I wanted him to recommend someone for this investigation. That sounds about right. In the meantime, I'll drop, the I'll drop by the clinic again. And try and get more info out of the victims, perhaps. Have a look at these reports, though. I've been through them, but haven't found, uh, found anything. Ron left the heap at my table. If you find anything, let me know. And Ron left. I wrote a note to Mark Edison and sent it by air. Edison was, was a department man. Responsible for providing the Aurors with everything they, they might need, be it potions, books, or artifacts. He knew every supplier there was. The reply came later in the evening. Good, good evening, Mr. Potter. For your case, I could recommend one potion maker only. That would be Draco Malfoy. Perhaps you are acquainted. He supplies our department with the most complex potions and antidotes. Thus, I could not think of a candidate more appropriate for the, for the task. Hope the investigation goes smoothly. Please, do not hesitate to write me if I could be of with mo more help to you. Sincerely, Mark Edison. I grunted. Malfoy. Of course, it just had to be Malfoy. Fate is having a blast watching us two meet. So, we, so he wasn't lying about his work after all. The idea of a possibility to work together made me feel warm and spontaneously happy. What?! Well, that's going to be a challenge, but if there's no other option, I have to try this one. Hey, Harry, your gayness is showing. <laughs> what is it with me and my relationship with all good potion makers? <laughs> you and Snape. <laughs> I took a clean parchment sheet and got stuck trying to figure out how to start a letter and what to write about. Hey, Malfoy, want to help help with an investigation? And for if I'm not believing you that day, sound abs absolutely dumb. Hey Malfoy, last time we met was fun. Want another go? I'll drop by tomorrow. <laughs> what? <laughs> you wouldn't appreciate the joke though. I 
spent an hour more like more like this, which resulted in a very short letter. Hello, Malfoy. I'll come by tomorrow. H.P. Lovecraft. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, I flew over to the Malfoy Manor. I was hoping we could have a normal talk this time. I took a deep breath, seriously doubting any chances of that. Marty opened the door, just like last time. I followed him slowly into the living room. Mr. Potter, cares for some tea? No, thanks. I won't be here long. Then please, wait here for young master. He will join us. Join you soon. I nodded, and the elf bowed in return, leaving the room after that. Just as I said, Draco got here soon enough. He was probably in that lab of his, judging by the bitter smell coming from his clothes. Hello, Potter. Malfoy greeted me nonchalantly, trudging his words a bit as usual. Hello, Malfoy. And silence spread throughout the room. He was standing in front of Draco, and was looking at him as if I'd, I'd never seen him before, completely forgetting why I got here in the first place. He didn't, li he didn't like that, apparently, as he moved his shoulders a bit and broke the silence. Potter, if you're here on business, do speak, and do not indulge in dramatic pauses. Now what about, and what about you saying, if you want to visit me, just send an owl? Merlin, Merlin's beard, what am I saying? The inner me face mom because of the awkwardness. <laughs> Draco looked confused, clearly having not expected such an answer. Potter, have you been hit in the head by a, by a bludger or something? I quickly decided to change the subject. The Ministry needs your help. As it turns out, you are one of the best potion makers around. You don't say. Draco's smirk was full of overconfidence. And why do I have to help you after you, after yet another search for my premises by your people? Well, it wasn't in vain. And you do still have the forbidden book. Doesn't matter. It does matter to me! Listen, Malfoy. There is something more serious in the books. People are going insane one after another, and we have no idea as to how and why. We need your help. Draco looked at me with tired eyes, going silent for a moment. Fine, but do not think of that I'm agreeing just because I want to help you. I simply do not like to be in debt. We're even, Potter. Great. Then, tomorrow I'll drop by with, with the clues and I'll need you to make an antidote. Draco nodded in response, and thinking that the conversation was over, called for Marty! Marty? Marty? Escort Potter out? It was slightly disappointing, but I decided not to impose my company on Malfoy. See ya, Malfoy. The elf escorted me to the outside, where I apparated back to the ministry. What?! You went there by broom, but you can apparate? In the morning, I ran by the archives and got two little vials. One of them had tea, the other juice. Both those drinks were consumed by the victims not long before the, the assault. After that, I apparated to the Malfoy Manor. I was about to knock on the door when it got suddenly opened by the elf. Good morning, Mr. Potter. Please, come in. I followed the elf. Young Master is waiting in the lab lab laboratory. Thank you. I knock on the lab door. Come in. I opened the door carefully and went in. Jacob was standing with by a cauldron, mon monotonously stirring its contents. Morning, Malfoy. Good, m good morning. You didn't specify your time of arrival, so be kind and wait now. There's a chair in the corner you can use. I sat down. I had nothing to do while I was waiting for Malfoy to finish do doing what he was doing. So I look around. This laboratory reminded me of Snape's classroom. Probably because of all the flasks, beakers, and vials that were all over the place. I looked back at, at my former enemy. <coughs> Wait, what? Since when is he my former enemy? And what is this music? <laughs> Come to think of it, Malfoy is no enemy. Voldemort, well, that's another, that's another thing. Draco, on the other hand. Draco is just a pain in the neck. The one and I can't get rid of. Appar apparently. And I don't even think I'd like to. <laughs> Besides, he's not the complex driven schoolboy I once knew. He's changed. 
not just his behavior, but his looks too. Now he was more like his father, though. His physique was much more fragile than that of Malfoy's ma his senior. And those hands. And look at how he was stirring the potion. His hands look so elegant and beautiful. Hand fetish! <laughs> why should why shouldn't they be, they be like that? Malfoy, for sure. Has probably never held a floor mop in his hands in his whole life. I close my eyes, m remembering the sensation of a Malfoy's skin under the tip of my fingers. A, fam a familiar voice knocked me out of meditation. <coughs> hey, Potter! Wake up! Malfoy stood by his cauldron, turning to face me. Why are you looking at me like that? He grinned. Uh, nothing like that. <laughs> I jumped to my feet as if stung by a bee. And I wasn't looking at you! To change the subject as quickly as possible, I took out the evidence obtained from the archive from my, from my pocket. That's what we managed to obtain from the, from the crime scenes. These are samples of drinks that two of, the, two of the victims drank. Why do you think that... Why do you think that these drinks have any connection of, uh, with what happened? Because all the victims claimed the same, same, same one thing. Their strange sensations began precisely when they were having their drinks. I went over to Draco and handed them the vials. <sighs> Put them in the table. I'll look at them when I'm free. I crossed his arms over his chest. I, obe I, obe I immediately put the vials on the table. Anything else? No. No, uh, that is... Uh, yes. I remember about the agreement of non-disclosure of the details of the investigation. That it has to be signed. I need your signature right here. I handed the agreement of Malfoy. Draco took it. He quickly glanced at the document, signed it, and handed it back to me. That's it? Yes. Then I'll write to you as soon as I have my any news. You know where the exit is? Sorry. You know where the exit is? I think Malfoy is trying to get rid of me faster. Not that, not that we are friends, of course. But we're not enemies anymore. Malfoy, look, if you have any problems with the fact that I'm in charge of this case, and you do not want to cooperate with me, then... But Malfoy did not let me finish speaking, interrupting my monologue. Potter. I do not want... <clears throat> I do not want... What? Sorry. I don't know what you've managed in the brain of yours. I am simply doing my job, and so are you. And if you need friendly hugs and conversations over a cup of tea, better address your red-haired friend and his girlfriend. I do not hu I do not need your tea. I just thought that since we're working together, you could be, y you know, friendlier. <laughs> friendlier? Malfoy took a step toward me. What do you mean by this, friendlier? Draco took another step and was almost right next to me. My heart started beating faster. Blood rushed to my cheeks. I secretly expected him to lean forward and kiss me. Frightened by this desire, I stepped back hesitantly. M Malfoy! Malfoy! Forget everything I've just said. I, I, I don't need anything from you. I, I think I'll go. If I do, I'll say, or say something that will make me forget it for a long time after. Jacob showed his satisfied smirk. S see you. Potter, what are you? No, 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 nothing. I quickly took the agreement and hurried off. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I want more. Some time passed. Draco worked on antidotes. Apparently, things were not going as smoothly as Malfoy and I would have liked. Draco sent me letters once a week in which he wrote basically that it takes a little more time. From time to time, I, I would app apparate to him for, for new antidotes to test on the victims. As it turned out, Malfoy's was, Malfoy was, easily, uh, was easy to work and communicate with when he wasn't being rude or sarcastic. And at some point, I can't understand when or how it happened, but I realized that I had begun to experience some ex inexplicable feelings for this person! <laughs> oh, what? I liked his voice. You do? I'm, well, I'm trying! Especially when he was addressing me. If it was yet another snarky remark. You just want this company, huh? 
Oh, Harry. Oh, Harry. Oh, Harry. I was beginning to lose myself when he would bite his lower lip in the process of working on some compli complicated potion. Too bad that I saw it only, only a couple of times. Although I still didn't want to admit it and hope that everything would soon pass. But these feelings stayed. <laughs> what are these feelings? Mr. Porter, I thought you have ho the hearts for Ginny. But apparently, you're also going for the blondie boy. Our blondie best boy, as we call him. But these feelings stayed. And it all started probably when, it, when I began to see strange dreams. At first, these were dreams. Where we continued to investigate this case together. And Malfoy was my partner. <laughs> This distant surprised me very much because I got used to working with him. Oh, 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 when God you have your soul. Oh, 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 But then, then I began to have dreams of a different sort. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, oh, oh. For example, a recent dream also had Draco in it. <laughs> it was as if I had come to Malfoy for another potion. Draco came out to me, but instead of a test tube with a potion, there was a rose in his hands. <gasps> he came up to me, said that I should open my mouth and force me to clench the flower with my teeth. <gasps> oh! Oh! <laughs> And what? Expel or expel or expel your an your <laughs> <laughs> expel your anus? <laughs> and he spun me around in a dance. He spun you around in a dance? <laughs> when I re when I recall this dream, the absurdity of the situation gave me goosebumps because it's. What? Because it is absurd. Draco Malfoy dance you around. <laughs> This dance was similar to the tango that I once once saw on TV. We spun and fell onto Malfoy's bed. <laughs> well, there it went further. <laughs> After a series of such dreams, it's not surprising that I began to pay more attention to him, to his elegance, his grace, even his manner of speech, which always irritated me before. Now seem attractive and inviting. <laughs> inviting? <laughs> oh my god. What the hell, Mr. Potter? <laughs> Mr. Potter, what the hell? I thought that if I don't talk to someone about this, I'll go crazy and at some point, I'll just pounce on Malfoy. Oh my god. <laughs> Terry, sweetie, are you stupefying right now? Talking about training in bed. Oh my god. <laughs> Talking about training in bed. <laughs> <laughs> then he goes ridiculous on his d <laughs> Therefore, I decided not to wait for that to happen and to tell it all to Ron! He is still my best friend and apparently my secret keeper. <laughs> and I hope he will understand him and will perhaps give me some advice. Oh! Yes! Of course! Give... <laughs> mm. Of course. You're gonna ask Ron, the boy which Malfoy freaking... Draco said horrible things to. Good idea, Mr. The boy who lived. At the end of the working day, Ron and I met at the telephone booth next to the ministry and we decided to stroll around London, sit in some pub and talk about the, the case in a non-work environment. I'm still thinking about who could have done it. Maybe there's some kind of psycho from, from St. Mungo's who simply has nothing else to do. Yeah, right. Now, now, why would you think that? Well, because a normal person would not be so twisted. Come on, any anyone could lose some screws. What if... <laughs> what if it's Malfoy? <laughs> he knows a whole lot about potions. And he's the only potion maker been mentioned! He's made himself such, such a potion and is walking around pouring into it into others and collecting their traits. And now he's helping with the investigation. Sounds very inconvenient. Ron, that, that's just absurd. He does, ha he does not have a, have, have a motive. Plus, if they catch him, he'll be sent to Azkaban. That's only if, he, if they catch him. 
They may well not catch him. Maybe he's gone crazy with his potions. Who knows? Speaking of Malfoy, I see you are working together nicely. Tell me, how did you get him to cooperate? <coughs> well, I just appear and say, Oh, when God and Levio saw, oh. I didn't force anyone, <laughs> since you asked. I want to tell you something about Malfoy. I hesitated. Oh my god! Uh, what is it about Malfoy? Uh, get ready. <laughs> Take a couple of sips. Ron looked at me worriedly. Oh, Harry, are you going deaf? I don't like... I don't like it already. He obediently took a couple of sips of beer. Something, somehow it happened that, it seems to me, I started to like Malfoy. I hear a deep sigh. <sighs> Meaning, your pals now? <laughs> not really. It's not a matter of friendship. Aloha more on Malfoy! <laughs> I mean, I like him like how you like Hermione. What? Ron stopped staring at me. Please tell me you're joking. <laughs> you've, cle you've clearly been poisoned. He grabbed me by my shoulder with his free hand and shook me. Harry, we need to find an antidote. Let's go to Malfoy. That's not what I'm talking about, Harry. <laughs> Harry, stop. <laughs> Ron, calm down. You could you would be funny if you could just say, then let's go to Malfoy's then. <laughs> Nobody poisoned me. Except the poison of love. I I can't I, I, Oh yes, I cast a love spell on Draco Malfoy. He's protected by Lily's love. <laughs> I I can't believe it. I believe what I just heard. Well, okay, it, it... Well, okay, it's okay, but I always thought that you liked girls. <laughs> yes, everything is fine. I still like them, just this happened. His body, this is showing. <laughs> I don't... I, I don't understand how this is possible. How, how did it start? I took a deep breath and told Ron the whole story. From the day, from the day I went to Malfoy with the list of forbidden books. When I finished telling him about my dreams, I, which had begun to increasingly bother me, it was already getting dark. I don't know, pal. PAL! I don't know, pal. It seems to me that you've, for, you've imagined something in your head, judging by what you've told me. Malfoy is, has no such thoughts. Still, that isn't bad. Maybe after a while you let it go, too. I hope so. But it still hasn't. It's been a while. Well, don't stress too much. If we don't let go, we'll, we'll just have to find you a pretty blonde. <laughs> Ron patted me on the back with an encouraging gesture. Very funny, Ron. I scoffed back at him. Maybe he's right, and if Malfoy continues to behave with, with restraint, it'll go away. After all, someday, we will finish working on this case, and I won't have to see him again. This thought made me even sadder. Apparently, Ron had noticed this. Listen, Harry. Well, if that bothers you, maybe... I don't know. Give him a hint? Right. Right. Why don't I just ask him out on a date while I'm at it? Maybe not all at once. Nah, Ron. Thanks for your support. But I'll keep my feelings away from, from Malfoy for now. If that's what you want, but... I know my, 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 by my own experience that hiding feelings isn't good. You and Hermione had, you know, a slightly different situation. I look at my watch. Uh, probably, probably. It's time for us to go. Otherwise, we won't get to work tomorrow. But Ron nodded his head. Harry, don't be shy if you needed to talk about something you just, or just vent. Just tell me, I'm always here. Thank you, Ron. You're a real friend. Ron and I said goodbye and both went home. <laughs> and so on Tuesday, I once again came to Draco with a new sample for the antidote. 
However, this time I arrived half an hour earlier because I wanted to have a lunch break after I'd returned from Malfoy's. To my surprise, no one opened the door. Therefore, I had to knock several times. Maybe there's no one home. Then the door finally opened and Draco appeared before me. He looked exhausted. Come in. I nodded and followed Draco. You're early. I didn't think it would be a problem. Yes, of course. Wait for me here. I'll bring the antidote. Draco moved to go back to the lab, but before he could even take a step, I called out to him. Ma oh my god! <laughs> Malfoy! Akio Malfoy! <laughs> Draco stopped, not turning around. What? Maybe I should still listen to Ron. I'd like to... you like to what? I didn't have time to finish speaking as the entrance door swung open and a dark-haired girl ran into the living room. <laughs> she swept by me, apparently without even noticing, ran up to Malfoy and hugged him tightly. Ooh! Malfoy looked as surprised as I was. Draco! They killed him! After a moment of hesitation, Draco hugged the girl, bringing her closer. I felt something stinging on the, on, on the inside. They killed my father! Pansy Parkinson! Her name is Pansy Parkinson! Did, are you a disease, girl? The girl's shoulders began to shudder as she cried softly. Draco stood silently for a while, struggling her, her on the back. And I had no idea what to do. I didn't particularly want to leave. And I couldn't allow, allow myself to ruin this moment. But Draco decided to handle the situation himself. He looked at me and said, Return, return later. I nodded and was about to leave. But I heard a voice. Potter! She turned and looked directly at me, hatred burning in her eyes. The girl moved away from Draco, wiping away her tears. What the hippogriff are you doing here? I have some business with Malfoy. You four-eyed freak! Before, because of you, my whole family is in Azkaban! Because of you, my father was killed! I put my hand into my pocket where my wand was, just in case to be ready for an attack. She pulled out her wand and directed at me. Pansy, come down! Jacob tried to get closer to her and come to calm her down. Pansy! Jacob, Draco, get back! Do not I do not want you to get hurt! It would have been better if you if, if they'd killed you, Potter. Crocio! Protego! Protective barrier form around me. Pansy continued walking towards me, swinging spell after spell, her eyes were filled with flames of rage. I kept only defending myself, hoping that the fervor would subside. You're a worthless Gryffindor! I hate you! And the spell ricocheted from my shield, followed by a dull blow sound. The spell hit Draco, who was standing too close. <gasps> no! Draco! <laughs> While trying to stop his girl his girlfriend. Everything inside me shrunk in a second. Draco. Pockets and lowered her wand and turned around. She rushed to Draco as soon as she saw that what that she, he was lying on the floor and I ran up for the other from the other side. Oh Draco, honey! Forgive me! Draco! Call the call the Medi Wizards! Pansy's hands were shaking with horror. Tears streamed down her cheeks. She, she looked frightened. Now <laughs> Yes! She ran away. I knelt beside Draco. Hey. Malfoy. Draco was lying with his eyes closed. If it were not for blood on his lips, one might think that he's asleep. I took a handkerchief from my pocket, wet it with the, with a spell, <laughs> gently wiped, wiped the edge of Draco's mouth. You're alive, <sighs> aren't you? Please, give at least some sign. I leaned over to his chest and, and lowered my head. You know what's funny? He didn't cast Avada Kedavra. I leaned over t to his chest and lowered my head to listen to the heartbeat. Thump, 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 thump. He's alive. Draco. I gently took his one in mine. I'm sorry! I, took li I, t I gently took his hand in mine! Afraid of touching him otherwise. I had no idea what the spell of this crazy witch had might done. Come on, Malfoy. It would be stupid for you to die like that. Please, live. I felt his hand tremble a little. Soon there was there were many wizards. Pansy for some reason wasn't with them. They carefully levitated Draco to his room. For a while they were there, forbidding me to come in. 
when it was over, the chief medic witch told me that Malfoy should get bet should get better by evening, but he must have his bed rest for another two or three days, depending on his condition. Marty was nowhere to be found, and I decided that I couldn't just leave Draco in this, in this state. It would be inhumane. It was it was a good excuse to spend some time with him. Oh, nice room. Hey, sorry. I settled myself in the armchair next to his bed, and took a and took a book lying next to me on the coffee table. Wow, does Malfoy have other books? This one is also about potions. Probably he really liked his work. Since there was nothing else to do, I decided to read it nonetheless. It was much more boring than I expected. Oh, my charger's here. Fent. Ah, never mind. It was much more boring than I expected. And soon as I and soon I fell asleep with the book on my lap. When I woke up, it was already evening, and someone covered me with a blanket. <coughs> Marty was must be back. I look at sleeping Draco. Ah, oh, damn it! He looks so peaceful. I put the book on the blanket aside, went went up to the bed, and sat on the edge. Why are you? So why are you such a pain, Malfoy? I'm more than sure that you're not a bad person. Angelic no! Angelic even. When you sleep. Draco's blanket slid off his chest a bit as he moved in his sleep, revealing some old scar lines. Let's see. I moved the blanket even more. <gasps> and a horrid realization as to the origins of this scar hit me pretty hard. Sector Sempra. <clears throat> It's all my fault. I'm such an idiot. Had it not been for Snape that time, I would have killed you. Please, forgive me. I gently touch his cheek with my fingers. <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs> so beautiful. And yet I left you with these ugly scars. Suddenly, Draco wins and a quiet, and a quiet moan followed. I put my hand down quickly. Water. Uh, yes? I asked with caution. Potter. Uh, his breath became erratic, and he started to toss in bed with his eyes still closed. No! I was feeling the moment! He sprang up, still breathing heavily, but his eyes were now open. Malfoy tried to focus on me. What's wrong? Uh, why am I here? W weren't we in the living room? Um, your girlfriend cursed. Your girlfriend's curse that was meant for me was, was, as she was trying to kill me bounced back at you. The many wizards said that the damage was bad. But you're going to be just fine. They gave you all the necessary medications. I see. What about Pansy? Did you arrest her? No. She didn't come back after she had left to get help. I, s I see. Potter, don't report her. She was very distressed. Malfoy, she wanted to hurt me. Kill me. To be precise. That's an obvious court case, at least. Potter, I... I, I beg you. None of his mightiness was there anymore. As he was asking me not to report to this girl. I couldn't say why. <laughs> but it somewhat irritated and even angered me. Can, can't you see... Ow. Can't you see what's, what's wrong with the whole thing? And it's so blind that he'd simply forgive Parkinson and is even willing to defend her. What if she did kill me? You'd be asking to let her go still? Don't... Don't be ridiculous. She didn't kill you. I grunted. Fine. I won't say anything. What will I get in return, though? <laughs> what do you want? One wish. Potter, don't be a baby. Well? Fine, one wish it is, but be reasonable and no blackmailing afterwards. I smiled victoriously. Perhaps we should make the unbreakable- UNBREAKABLE VOW?! <laughs> oh! My god! Harry, are you serious? That would be nice, but would be- But we would be needing one more person. So I will simply rely on your Gryffindor honor. Good. So, what do you want? So, 
What do you want? A kiss! What if I say a kiss? A kiss? Excuse me. I should not have said that. No, 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 forget it. I simply waiting for a snarky remark or a smirk. For a few seconds, Jacob was staring at me, as if try trying to figure out my plan. Oh, Malfoy, you can't stop staring. You can't stop staring. There's no plan. Never has been. Are you being being serious? As I said, forget about it. Fine by me. Now it was my turn to be surprised. <gasps> what? Come closer. I'm still in pain. Why are you staring at me like that now? It was your idea, not mine. Th yes, but I was expecting... What? That I'd call you a pervert and shove you out of the door, and then keep making fun of this moment for the rest of my life? To begin with? Yes? <laughs> You're correct. But that shall come later. That in my current state, we have a deal. <laughs> I can't say what I was expecting, but it was far more awkward than I thought. I moved closer and leaned into Malfoy. Close your eyes. I did as he asked. Jacob pressed his lips against mine. The kiss lasted only for a few moments. However, it was enough for me to feel immense pleasure. I wanted this kiss to last forever. Without hesitation, I moved in closer. But Jacob placed his palm on my chest and pushed away. When I opened my eyes, I could see that he was blushing, and I looked and looked startled! <laughs> Sorry. I mumbled, trying to get my breath back. Draco shook his head. I, I did my part of the deal, but we must promise never to speak or even think of this moment. Fine. A few weeks passed. Finally, a letter came from Draco, saying that he had succeeded in making the, the antidote, and the and he will deliver it to me in person. <laughs> I barely finished reading this letter when Ron barged in, into my office. Harry! Hurry up! There's been an attack and we got the guy! A apparate of Fitzroy, Fitzroy Street! He did exactly that as soon as he had finished speaking. Then came a knock on the door. Come in! I hastily took my wand and slid it in my pocket. A familiar voice called me from the door. It's Malv! Hello, Pa. There's no time. Tell me later. Now, now we operate. I hurried to Draco, took him firmly by his hand and cast a spell. Ooh! We appeared in a crowd of fuzzing bystanders. Why the hippogriff did you drag me here? Malfoy, be quiet for a moment, will you? The aurors got, got the suspect. But Draco w was all but, but quiet. Why should I care? I glanced at him angrily, realizing that I was actually being angry at myself. He was, he was right, it's, it's no place for him to be. Stop complaining! Potter, could you at least let go of my hand before you crushed it? No, oh, sorry. I probably got too excited from finally having a suspect, and didn't even notice that I grabbed Malfoy's hand too firmly. I let go, and he rubbed his poor hand, showing how offended he was. The Auras did indeed catch someone. The wizard was shouting that he's innocent and that that's all a mistake. Then he saw me and went still. Harry Potter? Let go of me! Let me speak to him! He'll believe me! He approached him. Ron was standing near the orders who were holding the guy. I'm innocent! I didn't know what was in that juice! It was sold to me and I simply gave it to Martha! And we are supposed to believe that. Ron noticed Draco and cringed slightly. He wasn't fond of such company, but he kept silent, probably considering my personal feelings. Malfoy also decided not to add any oil to the fire, and merely nodded at Ron. You can, you can make me testify with the Veritas Serum. We will still have to take you in, sir. Fine, fine. You can loosen the grip. I'll come with you. Ron asked the Aurus to let go. What the short? And that was a mistake. As soon as he got his hands free, he slid them into his pockets and disappeared in a puff of smoke. We could hear that that he was struggling to escape. Ouch! Get him! The people around suddenly started coughing and panicking. Demo managed to grab his hand and for a short so for a short se second, the guy broke free but left a bracelet in my hands. Oh 
trying to cover my face but with the mantle sleeve off of my other hand to avoid inhaling the smoke. And I heard an unknown spell read out by Draco, and the smoke was gone. There he is, Potter! Get him! <laughs> yeah, get him! Dra Draco grabbed my elbow and dragged off, drag off with him. We managed to get out of the crowd and started chasing the criminal, but not to no avail. Damn it! Dra Draco ca caught his breath. That is not what I signed up for, by agreeing to help you. On the other hand, that was to be expected, considering it was all you did in, did in school. Got into all sorts of trouble. Ugh, I, don't, I didn't think it turned out like this. Jacob was studying my clenched hand. What do you have there? Uh, what do you mean? Ah, I forgot. I got this bracelet off of him. You're such an animal, Potter. Such, so much passion. A bit more and you would have left him in nothing but his undergarments. Jacob followed his remark with a melodious laughter. I, on the other hand, frowned. Hey, stop mocking me! Sorry, I, I cannot. It's in my jeans. It's in my jeans! <laughs> You're such a pain. Did I ask you to bring me along with you? By the way, why did you bring me with you? I... I don't know. Just a reflex, apparently. Come on. Admit that you were you were scared to come here without, without me. I seriously love their dynamic. <laughs> Love their dynamic. <sighs> Very funny. Let's go back to the others. Jacob nodded and followed me. By the way, what kind of spell did you use to disperse the smoke? From my personal arsenal. Without it, the manor would be constantly in smoke from potions, and Father would not have been, would not have appreciated it. Appreciated it. We found the others and returned to the ministry. Well, we missed our well, we missed our chance. Ron said angrily. I sighed without satisfaction this time. It's no wonder that in our time there are so many criminals running free when I see the auras work, qua work quality. Oh, shut up, Malfoy. And it's bad as it, as it is without, even without you. Don't worry, we'll, we'll catch him. When he takes pity on you and comes to the department to surrender, I presume. Malfoy? I was getting displeased with the conversation. <laughs> Fine, fine, I'll stop. Draco, step aside. Thank you. So, Ron, what do we do now? This guy was waking, w walking with a girl and, uh, and invited her to have a glass of juice. She agreed and then, as usual, she felt strange, fell down and a whiff of smoke appeared from her chest. The criminal obviously failed to collect it in time and it simply disappeared. Hmm. Here we look at Draco. Most likely uses a spe specially enchanted container to collect that smoke. I use them when I, when I need to collect steam from potions. Makes sense. What does the victim say? She had, she had known this man for a long time, but today, according to her, he behaved very strangely. I see. Maybe it was not him at all. Your thief could have made a polyjuice potion. He could, yes. We should take note of that possibility. Ron looked at me, and at Malfoy. Well, I'll go try to find out some more details from the victim. And you? Don't mess around. I rolled my eyes in my, in my mind. Weasley, what are you talking about? Malfoy looks back skeptically at Ron. Nothing, nothing, yet. Nothing, nothing, yet. And he hurried away. Potter, does everybody here get deprived of their brains? Get de deprived of their brains, sorry. <laughs> no, and you could have appreciated that Ron didn't snap and tried to be a bit kinder. I sat down in my seat and took, took out the bracelet from my pocket. So you came to me today with some news? Yes, I came to say that I found a lock replacement. Draco took a small case from his pocket, in which he obviously had potions. Let the wizard drink the whole vial right away, and after a while he, he should feel better. But for the min-optimal effect, you still need to find this luck. I'll brew more in a week. Is that liquid luck? This potion will help restore some luck, similar to Felix Felicis, only not so strong and without side effects. He put the vial of potion on my table. Oh. Oh? That's it? Where is the gratitude and river of galleons? I look at him skeptically. 
Thank you, Malfoy. Draco shrugged. No problem. It was a very interesting task. I'm still working on the second case. And if you uh, and if you have examples of, of other poisons, bring them. I think I can make make life easier for other victims too. <laughs> Fine by me. I noticed how Malfoy's kept looking at the clock on my wall. Ginny gave it to me. It's like the one that hung in the Weasley house. Now that now the clock was showing at work. That's a fine work of a work of art you have there. That's a clock. Ginny gave it to me. Draco scoffed at the mention of the younger Weasley. He turned his gaze to my desk and picked up the bracelet. Cheap trinket. Draco threw the bracelet back on the table. Okay, Potter. Good luck with this search for GL. I've wasted a day on your adventure and I still have things to do. What is GL? Good luck? Green Lantern? Merlin. Potter, did you even notice that there are initials of some GL on the bracelet? Where could I... You snatched it away uh, the very moment I put it down. Yes, 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 yes. Keep blaming me. Draco turned to leave, but then I remembered about the search map. What if... Suggest Malfoy to follow the criminal. Wait. Draco stopped at the door without turning around. Yes. Maybe... I hesitated a little. Because I did not want to look needy for this for his attention. Come on, Potter. I'm not going to stand, t stand here all evening. Evening? I thought... Maybe... He would like to track down the criminal together with me. I have a search map. Malfoy turned to me. I must admit, I'm surprised by by a lot. For example, the fact that you suggest tracking down the criminal to me, and not to your fateful red-haired co comrade, or that you think that today I've had too many adventures, and I'm hungry for more. <laughs> or that you have a search map. All right, all right, all right. I get that you're surprised. I was just asking if you don't want to, then don't. I was embarrassed and began bustling, shifting documents on the table from one stack to, to the other. Draco pretended not to hear my last sentence. So, what about the map? I thought that they had been long gone and forgotten. <gasps> CG! Look at that pretty boys! Look at the pretty boys! Look at them! Look at together! Look, 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 look. Just, look, look, look. Just look at them together! They're so pretty! Malfoy walked away from the door and sat next to me. They do exist. They... They are only a few... <laughs> they are only a few and they are only available to certain departments. Why don't you use it to catch former Death Eaters? You have the name list. It is not that simple. It requires a personal item that has been recently taken off. This is hard to get. Do you want to take part in the search? No. I stayed to have tea with you. Well, that was good tea. Tea tea. <laughs> Draco looked at me skeptically. You are a rather worthless detective, you know. If I don't leave, it means I agree. I ignored this remark. Took the search map of London and surrounding area from the, from the shelf and then followed it on the, on the table. Putting the bracelet on top, I cleared my throat and painted the wand at the bracelet and pronounced a spell. For a couple of seconds, nothing happened, but then... But then, the bracelet levitated off and over the map, circled, determining the direction and soon lowered down. It marked a place on the outskirts of, of London. It, it is there! He is there! Let's fly. I quickly wrote down the address and put a scrap of parchment in my pocket. Wait, Potter. I, re I remember, of course. I remember, of course, that you love seeking adventures on your Gryffindor. Hide, but are, but are not, but are not you making a mistake? Meaning, we should te tell at least someone where we are going, and I need a broom too. Or are you thinking to go on two on one? Fly in one broom. I could get two brooms, but he does not need to know about it. About it. Damn, you're right. I only have one broom available. Are you being serious? Absolutely. I will understand if you are afraid to fly with me. 
I had a little sadness to my voice. Ah! Oh, Harry, what are you doing? Are you taking me for a coward? No way, since I've agreed to get involved in this adventure, I will not retreat. But it seems strange to me that you have only one broom at your disposal. Are you lying to me? Malfoy, you think that I really want to ride with you? Of course I do. <laughs> How do I know what's going on in that box with spiders, which you called your head? Maybe after the time at Hogwarts you dream of nothing else but 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 of getting me into your broom. <laughs> <laughs> but of getting Oh yes, you want to ride in his broomstick? Jacob rolled his eyes. <gasps> and it sounded completely different than I thought. I just grin grinned back. Yes, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> what am I think I'm thinking about and uh, what I'm thinking about again? <laughs> And it's all that blonde bastard's fault. And there's no turning back. We got the roof of the ministry. I, sa I saddled my broom and looked at brooding, brooding Draco. Sit down. I won't bite. We'll have to see about that. Draco came to me and sat behind me. <laughs> he hesitated a little, but he wrapped his arms around my waist and pressed his chest up against my back. I trembled at the, at the touch. Hold tight. I heard my own voice, which was usually unusually hoarse, and slightly cleared my throat. Do not worry, Potter. I will not let you kill me. I still have many unfinished business matters, and the prospect of hunting hunting you as a ghost does not appeal to me. I pushed myself away from the room and we took off. The, the journey shouldn't be too long. Thirty minutes at most. After a while, Malfoy evidently was tired of sitting as far away from me as possible. <laughs> and press against me! Even more tightly! Malfoy, don't fall asleep there. Are you kidding? You're flying in such zigzag that I couldn't I couldn't fall asleep even if I wanted to. I just scoffed back. Malfoy is Malfoy after all. I wasn't flying that badly. Well, a couple of times I went down too low, but there was no other choice. The flock of birds had to be avoided. But the remaining time we flew in silence. Finally, we got to the right place. A small abandoned house was standing before us. Wait, isn't... I know that Malfoy is a Slytherin, but isn't Slytherin, like, needs to plan this out first? <sighs> Follow me. I didn't even think about getting going first. I took out my wand. I opened the door carefully, and we, we went into the house. Lumus! We made our way through quite, quite quietly, but the terribly creaking floor left no hope of not being noticed. If someone was in the house, he must have heard something. It could be a trap. Draco whispered into my ear, making my skin crawl as his breath tickled my neck. I know, but we have to check. Maybe then, just in case, I should wait outside. Scared, Malfoy? Dr Draco stopped and jabbed his elbow in my ribs. <laughs> you wish. From the basement, I heard a rustle. Something or someone in the basement. I whispered. We went to the basement door and opened it. I don't see anything. Wait for me here. I'll look, I'll look what's inside. Okay, but... Okay, but be quick. This place gives me goosebumps. I carefully took a couple of steps down the stairs. And suddenly I heard the loud bang of the closing door. I was pushed in the back and I rolled down the steps. I fell on the cold floor. Ah, this is the beginning. I'd heard a shout from Draco outside. Draco! <laughs> I, w I won't forgive myself if something happens to him. And then I realized that I couldn't move. I was paralyzed. I couldn't move a finger. How reckless of you, Mr. Potter. How much courage did you have to mus muster to come here? Or should I say how stupid one must, must be to do so? Well, I was just thinking of playing you a visit, paying you a visit. But you have made my job easier. I am grateful. The stranger grabbed me and turned me around so I could see his face. I tried moving, but my body just won't, would not listen. He forced my mouth and poured in some kind of nasty tasting liquid. It got difficult to breathe. My body started chipping as if I had a fever. A thin whiff of translucent smoke seeped out of my chest. The stranger began harvesting it into a small vial without wasting a second. At that moment, I felt that I regained enough strength to open my mouth. 
What are you doing? Do not worry. Do not worry. I'm just taking something that is of more use to me than to you, Mr. Potter. No. Stop this! I tried to move, but still couldn't. I still not even notice that I ca that I have taken it. However, I just might be wrong and you will turn into nothing. He sneered and pushed the cork into the top of the vial. Of course, that's providing they, they find you in time. I felt a knife being thrust into my chest. After those words, good day to you. The stranger suddenly threw the vial on the floor, shattering it. The smoke that escaped filled the whole room. When it cleared, there was nobody else in the room but me. I was scared. Is this really the end? It was offensive. Even I overcame Voldemort. And now would just die from some mere knife blow. It was even magical. But then I remembered Malfoy, who was right outside the door. Draco! <laughs> I tried to move, and it seemed that the spell had stopped, stopped working. Pain was spreading throughout my chest, but I made an attempt to get up. I failed. I seemed to have no strength left. Suddenly, I heard quick steps downstairs. Potter! Draco knelt beside me. What have, you done? What have they done to you? Malfoy rushed up to unbutton, or rather, judging by the sound, to tear, to tear apart my horror uniform. Potter, no! Ma Malfoy! Wait, stop! Malfoy! What? What? We need to do something about this knife. It could be. It could have been poisoned or coated in some potion of this madman. The world was getting darker. Potter, wait! Don't faint. Give me a couple of minutes. Jacob patted my cheeks. I don't feel so good. Don't say. There's a knife sticking out of your chest, and it must be pulled out. Then pull it out. That is going to hurt. Do not be ridiculous, Malfoy. I've died already. Remember? Remember? Okay. Draco's breathing was uneven. Nervous. Is it really that worried about me? <laughs> yeah, you died once. From the hands of Voldemort. <laughs> the boy who lived. Twice. <laughs> Malfoy sat down on my legs and took hold of the protruding knife. With trembling hands, he quick, quickly pulled it up and yanked it out. I cried out from the piercing pain. Potter? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm still alive. Fine. He took out this set of potion and choose, chose one of them. This is a disinfectant and healing ointment. Do not think that I'm trying to poison you. Malfoy, I'm not in a position to refuse your help, even if it's poison. Draco grinned, scooped out the ointment with his fingers, and began rubbing it into the wound. I cringed because it stung and burned, but his touch was gentle. I could feel not only pain, but also a sort of excitement that was coming from nowhere. It is rather weak, so it cannot completely heal the wound. Then the world darkened before my eyes, and everything began to spin. <sighs> At some point, I came to my senses. A cold wind was blowing past me, but I was pressing against something warm and soft. The wound on my chest still hurt. Halloween is only one month away. What? That's... that's... what? that's a thing? With this very random thought, I again, I again lost my consciousness. The next time I came to my senses, I was li lying on the cold floor in Malfoy's, ma Malfoy's house. I got to my feet. It was more difficult to do than usual as I was wearing armor. Wait, can't you just get the house elf to... to apparate you back to the house? It can cast magic and then... Draco could just call it like what Harry did to Dobby before. I got to my feet. It was more difficult to do to do than usual as I was wearing armor. Something was definitely off. Mal Malfoy? Mar Marty? I called quietly. Clouds of smoke appeared by the stairs. When the smoke cleared, Malfoy was standing in front of me in all of his glory. Potter... He still had the courage to come to me. What do you mean? I couldn't understand what he was- Are we in D&D &D now? I couldn't understand what he was talking about. He went to that house together, didn't we? 
I expected you to be scared and not listen to your king. But you proved to be too brave or too stupid for that. Do you think you can defeat me, knight? Draco opened his hands majestically, as if outlining something. Are they LARPing? What are they doing? But he looks cool in that outfit. He looks like Loki! <laughs> I don't get it. Is this a joke, Malfoy? But then an unseen force tossed me from Malfoy and pressed me to the wall. Draco slowly walks towards me. I would say that your whole life was a joke. Is it not a pity that your king sent you to me as a sacrifice? I tried to free myself, but I couldn't. How naive you are. You didn't even know this. Malfoy, look, I don't know, I do not know what is, what's going on here. Shall I, shall I tell you? He approached me. Draco began telling the story without waiting for my answers. We made an agreement with the king that if he sends me his best knight, I will stop terrorizing his nasty little city. That's why you're here. What king? What city? Malfoy? And, and since why, when, when am I a knight? Well then, keep pretending to be a fool. Draco, please explain to me. What shall I explain to you? How am I going to master the king's knight? Malfoy, you're out of your mind. Please st stop this masquerade. Potter, if you still think I'm joking, you're wrong. It's some sort of madhouse. Malfoy was completely insane. You're very much mistaken. With that, Draco ran a fingertip across my cheekbone. I'll make you squirm under me. My cheeks immediately flushed and my breath got faster. What does he mean? Maybe he's somehow le learn about my feelings and wants to wants to mock me. No one will no one will help you, Potter. Not even your king. You shall belong only to me. Jacob kissed me for <laughs> what? Jacob kissed me forcefully and greedily, biting my lips. For a few seconds, I forgot how to breathe. His kiss was dom domineering and furious. My senses coming back, I returned his kiss, although hesitantly at first. And after a few seconds, I was kissing him back just as passionately. There was no other force except Draco's body that was pressing me to the wall. I know, that uh, that escalated quickly. I'll play by his rules. If he wants me to. If he wants difficult to grab him. It, was it wasn't difficult to grab him. By the shoulders and swap places. Now Draco was pinned to the wall. He broke the kiss, panting. <sighs> Potter. It's like, Potter. Draco. I could no longer control myself. I was overcome with desire. I kissed him with yet more fervor. I felt Draco try to, trying to escape, but he didn't succeed. I took hold of the collar of his robe. With an abrupt movement, I tore it apart, exposing the pale skin of Dra Draco's chest. Remains of the mantle, like trickles of water, slid down his slender body. Then I tore off my armor and tossed it occasionally to, casually to the floor. Draco shivered, shivered involu involuntarily and from the sudden rumbling. I broke the kiss as the quiet voice of my mind still managed to fight through the wail of excitement, pleading to stop and think about the, what we were doing. I look at Malfoy who was trying to catch his breath. Have you changed your mind, Potter? Draco, <gasps> Draco stared at me, stared at me, squinting, his hands sliding slowly over my stomach. It's too late. I did not even notice when he managed to undo the belt and pull off my pants and underwear. Draco has experience! Draco? Wait, maybe... Shut up, Potter. He ran his hand over my hard on. CG? Making me moan softly. I can see what you desire. Malfoy slowly stroked my cock. <coughs> He's gonna taste his expelliarmus. I buried my face in his shoulder. You know what's funny? If you're a good person, apparently your one is as long as your heart can be. How long is your magic one, huh, Harry? Draco, I want you.
a loud voice called me right in my ear. Potter! Wake up! It was all a dream! I opened my eyes and saw a nervous Malfoy hanging over me. It was all a dream! Malfoy! Draco let out a sigh of relief. So, it was a dream. Potter, you, you scared me. Many wizards assured me that your state was not critical, but you suddenly became feverish and began tossing and turning in bed and groaning as if you were in severe pain. Oh my god! Oh my god. These two wizards are dueling with their wands up in the air. I thought that you were, well, you were cursed and we didn't even know how exactly and what to do. And what is this facial expression of yours? Are you, are you disappointed? My cheeks burned. With anticipation! <sighs> so that's why Malfoy is a Slytherin. I... no. I'm fine. Were you worried? Of course not! I just didn't want you to die in my room. I still have to sleep here, you know? In your room? Wait, why am I in your room? I look around and indeed it was Draco's room. And then I remembered that we were tracking down the criminal and he wounded me. I look at my chest. It was tightly bandaged. I brought you here because Saint Mungus is farther away. You brought me here? Yes, you lost consciousness and I could only fly you here. Up operating was too risky. I remember the warmth next to me. <sighs> yes, they do. Oh, they make they make potions together. <sighs> they were stirring the Oh, their clay making is the is their spot stirring. That's who it was. I have to say, Potter, that you're f that you're freaking heavy, Malfoy. Thank you. Draco just nodded. We sat down on the edge of the bed. Tell me, tell me what happened after the door closed. I told Draco everything what happened. So we took something. Draco punted. How do you feel? I guess everything is as usual. Maybe he took something insignificant. I nodded. Now it's your turn. What happened? I heard a cry. Draco sighed. Apparently our mutual friend released a bogart, and at first I did not understand that it was him. And what did you see? Draco smiled bitterly. It doesn't. It's not. A, it doesn't matter. Come on, Malfoy. It will. It, it will be only fair if you tell me. You know mine, and if you. You know mine. We didn't even had a chance to giggle about it. Voldemort. Well, I should have... What? Wait, so basically... He got the personality of Voldemort? Well, I should have known. But you dealt with it. I patted Malfoy on the shoulders. Perhaps in vain, as he looked at me very unhappily. I patted Malfoy on the shoulder. Perhaps in vain, as he looked at me very unhappily. The doctor said that in order for your wound to heal, it, it is necessary for you to remain on the bed rest for a couple more days, so you can get dressed up, dressed and go home. But the prospect of, be, of being sick at home alone, it, it re didn't really entice me. Malfoy, can I stay here? Draco, apparently, we got to control emotions. As his face stretched in a rather comical amazement. Do not get me wrong, but... Why would you want to stay here? I, well, I can tell you all about it in detail. And also you'll be able to take my blood sample for analysis, so I won't have to constantly go back and forth. Draco looked at me, narrowing his eyes. <laughs> Fine. Marty! Draco clapped his hands loudly, <coughs> making me flinch. A second later, Marty appeared in front of us. Marty is listening, young master. Prepare a guest room for Potter, next to mine. Yes, sir. The house elf bowed and instantly disappeared. So, don't feel don't feel yourself at home. <laughs> <clears throat> Malfoy grinned. Father would probably have had a stroke if it learned that Harry Potter himself had stay was staying with us of his own free will. I imagine how Malfoy Sr. Would, would have reacted to such development with fury and hatred, and I leapt and felt terrified. 
But your parents are not coming back anytime soon, right? Yes. Did that frighten you? <laughs> My father would have liked that. Draco was obviously having fun. <laughs> I think this is the gay part of the novels. <laughs> Nothing like that. Just do not want to give you any problems. Really? Who would have thought that I would ever hear this from you? You did it all the time before school, school years. Let's not forget that you were asking for it. Maybe. But not that much. Right. Okay, I'll get back to work. Wait until Marcy returns and helps you move to another room. I nodded and Draco left. Well, I thought that Malfoy would simply scoff off my request. I sat on the bed. I took, took off Malfoy's pajamas and began to change into my clothes. I put on trousers and a t-shirt and get out of bed. And at the moment, Marty appeared. Mr. Potter, your room is ready. Thank you. Whoa! Harry Potter! Dude! You're... Are you... Are you wearing a, a, sle a sleeveless a turtleneck shirt? Thank you, Marty. Okay. And I think I will end here. Thank you all for watching. And I will see you all in the future. So thank you everybody for watching. My name is Yogi Cookie. Signing off saying, have a great day.